Most Americans don't know that in 1933, a large group of Americans, students, university professors, doctors, psychologists, were all sent by the major foundations in this country to the Soviet Union. I am now going to read you a portion of a speech delivered to these Americans in the Soviet Union who then came back and became the core of the communist and socialist cells which have been working ever since to overthrow this great nation and destroy it from within. They have grown and magnified their numbers beyond your comprehension and they are solidly in control of every level of our society and government. I quote an address by Laurentia Beria, the head of the Soviet secret police under Stalin. American students at the Lenin University, I welcome your attendance at these classes on psychopolitics. Psychopolitics is an important, if less known, division of geopolitics. It is less known because it must necessarily deal with highly educated personnel, the very top strata of mental healing. By psychopolitics, our chief goals are effectively carried forward to produce a maximum of chaos, in the culture of the enemy is our first most important step. Our fruits are grown in chaos, distrust, economic depression, and scientific turmoil. At last, a weary populace can seek peace only in our offered communist state. At last, only communism can resolve the problems of the masses. And now I just want to interject here that the motto, ladies and gentlemen, of the 32nd degree, of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry is, and I quote, Ordo Ab Chao. Out of chaos comes order. Create the chaos, offer the solution, institute the order. I continue with Beria's address to these American students. And not all were students, folks. Many of them were what you call graduate students. Older men and women of our country who went over there to learn how to overthrow us. I quote, a psycho politician must work hard to produce the maximum chaos in the fields of mental healing. He must recruit and use all the agencies and facilities of mental healing. He must labor to increase the personnel and facilities of mental healing until at last the entire field of mental science is entirely dominated by communist principles and desires. To achieve these goals, the psychopolitician must crush every homegrown variety of mental healing in America. Actual teachings of Freud, James, Eddie, and others amongst your misguided peoples must be swept away. They must be discredited, defamed, arrested, stamped upon, even by their own governments until there is no credit in them and only communist-oriented healing remains. You must work until every teacher of psychology unknowingly or knowingly teaches only communist doctrine under the guise of psychology. You must labor until every doctor and psychiatrist is either a psychopolitician or an unwitting assistant to our aims. You must labor until we have dominion over the minds and bodies of every important person in your nation. You must achieve such disrepute for the state of insanity and such authority over its pronouncement that not one statesman so labeled could again be given credence by his people. You must work until suicide arising from mental imbalance is common and calls for no general investigation or remark. With the institutions for the insane, you have in your country prisons which can hold a million persons and can hold them without civil rights or any hope of freedom. And upon these people can be practiced shock and surgery so that never again will they draw a sane breath. You must make these treatments common and accepted and you must sweep aside any treatment or any group of persons seeking to treat by effective means. You must dominate as respected men the fields of psychiatry and psychology. You must dominate the hospitals and universities. You must carry forward the myth that only a European doctor is competent in the field of insanity and thus excuse amongst you the high incidence of foreign birth and training. If and when we seize Vienna, 
You shall then have a common ground of meeting and can come and take your instructions as worshippers of Freud along with other psychiatrists. Psychopolitics is a solemn charge. With it, you can erase our enemies as insects. You can cripple the efficiency of leaders by striking insanity into their families through the use of drugs. You can wipe them away with testimony as to their insanity. By our technologies, you can even bring about insanity itself when they seem to rest easy. You can change their loyalties by psychopolitics. Given a short time with a psychopolitician, you can alter forever the loyalty of a soldier in our hands or a statesman or a leader in his own country or you can destroy his mind. However you labor, labor, however you labor under certain dangers, it may happen that remedies for our treatments may be discovered. It may occur that a public hue and cry may arise against mental healing. It may thus occur that all mental healing might be placed in the hands of ministers and be taken out of the hands of our psychologists and psychiatrists. But the capitalistic thirst for control, capitalistic inhumanity, and a general public terror of insanity can be brought to guard against these things. But should they occur, should independent researchers actually discover means to undo psychopolitical procedures, you must not rest, you must not eat or sleep, you must not spend one tiniest bit of available money to campaign against it, discredit it, strike it down and render it void. For by an effective means, all our actions and researches could be undone. Where does all of this politically correct thinking come from, ladies and gentlemen? It comes from our universities. It comes from psychologists and psychiatrists. It comes from the belief that there is one sane state and one sane personality, and all others are deviations, are psychosis, and are, in fact, bad.